people! Hello, black world! It's Brandon Brooks, managing editor of the Los Angeles Sentinel newspaper and also the LA Watts Times. I am here with you on the set of The Lobby with my lovely co-host. Hi, I'm Nicole Williams, and I'm the project manager of Taste of Soul Family Festival, the largest street festival in LA County. And I'm Taylor Bakewell. I'm the digital editor for the Los Angeles Sentinel. And again, we're here on the set of The Lobby where this is a weekly web series where we're talking about current topics, history, anything in news that's hot that you need to be brought to. Today, we're talking about a hot topic that's been going on for quite a while, really in California since 1996, being that California was the first to kind of set the tone, marijuana regulation and marijuana usage. We covered that Los Angeles is facing challenges of incorporating the business of cannabis into policy in the community. Um, our local councilman, Marquise Harris Dawson of the 8th District, actually held a telephone town hall talking about how the regulations and, and, and a lot of the, the, the law abiding parts of this that need to be brought to the attention of the public. Um, so, you know, before you know, we dig into a little bit more of the specifics, I'm going to pass it along. So what do you guys think about this? As you know, Prop 64 was passed in November, um, which was, is that medical, that marijuana usage is recreational now. So um, just kind of understanding, I know, I think a lot of people don't really understand the difference between, what does that mean for recreational? What does that mean for medical? What does that mean for people that want to get into the industry? So I think there's a lot of misconception, a lot of people just don't know, especially in our community. Um, about how to kind of fit within these new laws, I guess. Well, in March, Measure M was passed, um, which required the city to basically update the unfair practices with um, having um, marijuana dispensaries. And then in June, Council President Herb Wesson, his office, they drafted regulations um, that didn't go so well with all of the cannabis community. A lot of people had a lot of concerns which were addressed. A lot of people don't understand that when Prop 64 passed in November, a lot of what it allows, because even myself, I was confused about what we can or we cannot do. Um, pretty much the law goes into effect that you, you can, right as of now, if you're 21 or older, in 26, excuse me, 2017, January 1st, you can smoke marijuana without any criminal justice involvement. If you're 21 or over, you have the right to consume marijuana. Um, the other's a few things that people need to know. You have to do it within your home. It cannot be in public space. So think about that. If it's not in your home, if it's not in the privacy of your domain, I would suggest do not do it. So if you're on the corner, if you're somewhere, say, hey, it's legal. Trust me, they're looking for a chance to arrest you, so be careful with that. Unfortunately, that we still know the stats don't lean well for us that even though the regulations have allowed us not, to, we, we shouldn't be getting locked up, we still see blacks and Latinos being locked up at alarming rates. Uh, black people were four times even, I think in Los Angeles it was even reported at now, maybe even up to seven times more likely than whites to be uh, criminally charged for marijuana possession. Latinos anywhere between two to four times. Um, so these are very alarming rates in the prison population, which is part of this topic that I want to indulge in. It really speaks to the war on drugs and how it affects the black community. Um, you know, council member Marquis Harris Dawson, they, they did a poll within the community and 71% of the community members said that, hey, if we're gonna have these weed marijuana dispensaries, we should include those who are affected by the war on drugs. And I honestly totally agree. There are so many people in the black community affected by this mm -hmm. that why would we not get the opportunity to make a business of it? We were arrested for it. Um, a lot of people lost family members to the prison system or jail system because of marijuana. And now that it's legal, it's like, hey, what about the business opportunity in that? The thing about getting in, only 1% of dispensaries are owned by black people, and that's in all of the United that's States. That's crazy. Which is wow. really that's crazy. crazy because- It's disgustingly disturbing. Yeah, yeah it right. is. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so the thing about it is now that legislation is getting involved, you now have to know how to put together a business plan. Mm -hmm. You now have to factor in investors. Wow. Mm -hmm. So these are things that are already stacked up against black people for not having the business knowledge that their white counterparts have about growing and about, you know, how to successfully run a proper business. Mm -hmm. So, and it's cost tens of thousands of dollars mm -hmm. to start 
any type of business, yeah. especially get into this new this new area. Someone like myself that has stepped foot um, uh, on a few occasions into these establishments. Um, <laughs> I, I don't. I didn't say I was purchasing. I've just <laughs> been inside of them. Um, but again. Uh, you really find out that a lot of these businesses are not owned by African Americans, and many times uh, I rarely see African Americans working in the establishment outside mm -hmm. of security guards. Mm -hmm. right. So they're really not part of the actually handling of the marijuana products. You also have to have a clean record, and if you have something on your record that is the industry that you're trying to get into, which is marijuana, it's kind of like the chicken or the egg. What, mm -hmm. You know, where does it start? So people are still, they have yeah. these things on their record for right. marijuana, but they can't get the proper licenses. Well, speaking of the city of LA and, and the measures they're taking for regulation, um, recently um, Mayor Eric Garcetti appointed the first ever chief executive mm -hmm. director of the Cannabis Regulation Committee. Um, oh, I think we have that. Well, it's more properly known as LA Department of Cannabis Regulation. Um, this is a black woman. She has history of... Um, pol you know, being the front line of policy changes for um, cannabis. So um, we're hoping that by her becoming the first ever uh, chief executive director that she will be able to be a good medium between the community and uh, regulation with the government and she can almost be a voice for us and we're hoping to see that happen. Yeah. But This is actually Mayor Garcetti. Um, he um, saying he needs someone who understands and navigates those nuances. And Kat um, has a background in this industry, which is important to know. Garcetti went on to say, and this is the mayor, he's confident that her work will help implement new regulations in a way for all communities and raise in, in all neighborhoods and revenue for city services. So it's really good, and I, I want to put this note about Mayor Eric Garcetti. It's not really good. It's excellent that he's really leaned on a lot of African-American leadership in several departments over his tenure, and I have to give him credit for that. Everyone from even a Deborah Flint who's over the airport, he's he's had uh, deputy mayors who are African American. Uh, you just I, I just give you the mayor. I give you credit for working with the black community to just make sure we're not overlooked. So to see a black woman in this position, it it, it, it brings some sort of comfort because it lets me know that our mayor is understands the the nuances of this. How do you how do you guys feel about? the regulation of marijuana is that good for our community mm. is is that beneficial for our people mm. meaning that uh, just being it um legal in general or yeah just, just like that there's mm. there's regulations and laws yeah. that are being placed on marijuana in general mm. like what, what, is, that what is that against yeah, the community that against versus for it can't hurt because we see an alarming statistics that it's not benefiting us currently and if we study it from a health standpoint, it's many studies prove that no one has ever did. If you have that, please share the study with us. From my research, I've seen no evidence that it's ever killed anyone or known anyone has ever overdosed. Mm -hmm. Again, this does not mean that you cannot use it irresponsibly. Mm -hmm. Does not mean that you cannot use it in an abundance that it, you, it does do something to you. It is a psychosis. And, and I would suggest for people treat it as you do alcohol in the sense with children. Because some people say, well, what about with kids? We're gonna, they're, you know, they're going right. to want to do it. Cigarettes, alcohol, kids know about it. But they also know, don't touch dad's cigarettes. Don't touch mom's alcohol. Guess what? Don't touch our cannabis. And I don't want to see you do it. And that comes back to in the home, in these type of discussions, understanding the health risk what it can do to you, and also understand that if you're not 21 years or older, legally, you cannot do it. So do not do it. So I, But I to be fair, I do understand the concerns. Um, you know, we saw with the opiate epidemic that mm. kids were, well, start from prescription drugs and then led into things like heroin and other um, big drugs. But you see a lot of communities being plagued with the opiate epidemic, mm. and I think maybe that's where the fear comes from, like, hey, if weed is recreational and legally we can use it right. for whatever, um, does that mean it's going to be another epidemic where it leads into something else? Yeah. So I do understand those concerns, yeah, but I, I think there's a lot of miseducation about mm -hmm. marijuana in general. I mean, I think we're told from a young age, "Don't do drugs." Right. And we're right. told it'll kill you. This Don't is your do brain. It. So, yeah, <laughs> it, yeah, exactly. This is your brain on drugs, and there's just so much. There's just so much miseducation because 
there's like the plant like people are using it for paper and like yeah. things like that but there's so many restrictions on it especially like people are using it for cancers and things yeah. like that and it's a medicine as well yeah i think it also um i and, it, and it's good that cat uh, Packer, if I, I hope I'm saying your name properly. And hopefully we can speak to you, Kat. We really hope to hear some more information with you, Absolutely. and we'll be doing an in-depth interview with you yourself. Um, because taxation and regulation, where would these taxes be, be spent? Right. There's been rumors that it is going to go to studying the effects of marijuana. So a lot of our tax dollars will go to research. Hopefully they do. But again, I don't have all the specifics. But I know it's some odds between like fifty, between like fifty and seventy-five million are going to be spread around to different areas to even study, you know, driving under the influence of them just studying the drug mm. to understand the health risk. And I think that's more what has to happen because, again, you just said it. It's a lot of misinformation, and that's where the public is losing trust between the government. And again, the government being federal, it's still illegal. So again, this somewhat of this catch-22, where I would like this question answered, if you're a very successful business, don't the feds technically still have a right to bar yeah. barge in anytime yeah. they want? Do you remember that news anchor in Alaska, Charlotte Green, that literally went on air and was like, yeah, she yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I'm starting my own <laughs> business. So she's actually facing up to 50 years in prison because oh my God. she... Wow was in the cannabis industry before it was legal. It's legal. Recreational marijuana is legal in Alaska now. But she was doing it before. So mm -hmm. they're still and they've raided her dispensary twice and wow. like had her clients in on uh, like wow. with machine guns like pointing yeah. to their head. Like crazy things. So there's still people facing these criminal charges for things that are now mm -hmm. legal. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of holes in the system. Yeah. I think right. that's what we're discovering um, by having these conversations is there's too many yeah. holes um, where business owners and government can benefit from the sale of cannabis. There's people who are getting hurt by the holes in the system too. So mm -hmm. it's not fair for it to be beneficial, but then still hurting people in the same sense. So. People don't want to talk. Nicole about and I it. were looking at the new um, cannabis.ca.gov website, oh, wow. <laughs> and it really looks like a DMV web DMV page. Website, for sure. oh. Something about it is really eerie to me. To be completely yeah. honest, I don't. I. I just don't really. I have so many mixed feelings about just the reg, this super strict regulation. Right. Like maybe that could be the conspiracy theory in me, <laughs> in me. But it just something about this really strict, tight regulation and really not being able to express to people clearly what the laws are. And I think that it's important that we, like people in this industry, people that are interested in this industry, really do pay attention to legislation make sure you're a part of trade groups or yeah. things that are really you have to you have to either have a seat at the table or you will be on the menu as they mm. say so True. it's we need to pay really close attention and just not let something that really is in our community be controlled by people outside yeah. of our community yeah we as uh, black people in our community are smoking a lot of these tobacco papers uh, I don't want to do a drop for any specific companies which I'm not but these wraps, and we'll call them, they call them blunts. The, they have these other things, you know, called backwoods. I guess you got a little drop there. You have Swisher Sweets. You have these different products that wrap the marijuana. And I actually firmly believe those are much more harmful than the marijuana that it's, right. it's yeah. covering. Not to say that, but we need to be conscious of what we're doing. So it's not just marijuana you're smoking. You know, you're smoking tobacco products that tell you warning it can cause cancer right. mm -hmm. so be careful so I don't know if that means you need to do it in a bong or whatever but be conscious <laughs> of how you're consuming or even if the lighters you talk yeah. about the lighters you're yes. lighting oh. it up and it's like what am I really oh, infusing wow. my weed with like oh, yeah. it's it, there's always consequences to everything that's why it is yeah, important they have these to like wick lights now yeah, yeah no. is it scary at all though that because we're opening up legal dispensaries for recreational use that there is the potential to have certain chemicals in our cannabis products Ooh, where we maybe didn't have before. Conspiracy time. I mean, come on. Like, you got to think about it. Yes. And, you know, My answer. <laughs> What's yours? I, I mean, look, anytime you're so. consuming something, it's just like with all these recent documentaries about fast food, 
about um, some of our vegetables and the plants that we consume. With everything comes that little um, worry in the back of your mind, like, what am I really consuming right now? Like, right. am I, is this really... I saw food? something creepy on the internet this week <laughs> where one guy's uh, marijuana bud had legs and a mouth. What? Google it. No, 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 no. Google it. <laughs> It, it moved. Basically, he got a bug that looked like a marijuana uh, bud, and it started moving. So I guess to Nicole's point and to my point, be very careful. Thank you guys for tuning in to an episode of The Lobby. We appreciate your support. If you really support us, though, make sure you like this video and subscribe. And if you want to learn more about what we talked about today, you can click the links below. We would love to hear feedback, comments, concerns, future topics. We want to hear from you. We out, y'all. We out. <laughs>